Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. Today we will discuss about concept mapping in history. I am Dr. Vanita Anand. So let us start with the definition of concept map. A concept map is a type of graphic organization used to help students organize and represent knowledge of a subject. Concept maps begin with the main idea that is a concept and then branch out to show how that main idea can be broken down into specific topics. So basically it is in a form of a graph or a picture it is that is it is a visual presentation where the main idea or the concept is in the beginning or at the top end and from here number of ideas begin or emerge. It was developed by Novak at Cornell University in 1990s. First of all, it was basically meant for the subject of science, but later on as it was found to be very useful, so they started using it for various other subjects. Basically, if we talk about concept maps, it falls in the area of constructivism. That is, it is in the ambit of constructivism. When we talk about constructivism, we talk about constructing knowledge whereby the previous knowledge of the student is very important because the next knowledge is based upon and is built upon the previous knowledge of the students. That means here previous knowledge is given due importance. Concept mapping visually illustrates the relationship between concepts and ideas. As I told you, it's a graphic presenter. It's a visual presentation. Concept mapping is a powerful tool for the students to reach higher level of cognitive performance. That is, how much they can perform if it is with the help of cognitive map or concept map, then their performance is going to be even higher than it can be without a concept map. A concept map is also an ideal evaluation tool for you. When we say you, we mean you as teachers. So concept map helps teacher to evaluate. As students create concept maps, they reiterate ideas using their own words and help identify incorrect ideas and concept. And while they do this, the teacher may evaluate them and find out wherever the mistakes lie. Let us talk about elements of concept map. They are there in almost all the concept maps and you would need all of them while you try to make a concept map. So first of all, there are boxes. A concept map typically represents ideas and information as boxes or circles. If you have ever seen a concept map, you can visualize the boxes in whichever manner they are or in whichever form they are, but boxes are always there. Arrows. Ideas and information is connected with labeled arrows in a downward branching hierarchical structure. Now, as there are different kinds of concept maps, so it depends whether they are downward or they are branching out. Linking phrases. The relationship between concepts can be articulated in linking phrases such as causes, requires, contributes to and so on because these linking phrases tell us the relationship that exists between the concepts and the subconcepts and how they are related to each other. Now let us talk about some types of concept maps. First of all, you can see here is a spider concept map. In the spider concept map, the main idea is given not at the top but in the middle and out of this main idea branch out various ideas. Here you can see the three kinds of spider concept maps where the main box which is bigger than the other boxes is the main idea and when you look at such a concept map you can say which is the main idea. So spider concept map is very simple one to make. You have to write the main idea in the middle and the contributing ideas or the sub concepts in the other boxes. The next is hierarchical concept map. As we understand by hierarchy, that is superordinate and subordinate concepts. So here the main idea is at the top end and the lower ideas or the ideas which emerge out of this, they are at the bottom. 
they also tell the importance or level of the ideas by which we mean the highest one is most important and has the maximum level or the highest level. There, it can be made in various ways as you can see in this diagram. Next is flowchart concept map. Flowchart as the word suggests the ideas just flow from the upper idea. Here also the topic is written on the top but then the ideas that emerge out of these are just related to the previous idea and they are the consequence of the idea just previous to them. So the information is just flowing in a very coherent manner. You just see at the see the flowchart and you know what it means. Next is systems concept map. When we talk about systems concept map, we are basically talking about input, process and output. Here also there are a number of things which are operating in a systems concept map. So here there is input which are for example let us say we are talking about a war. So this, these can be causes, causes leading to process that is the actual event of the war and output that is the consequences or results of the war. Here sometimes output gives the feedback and here you can see the environment that is conditions leading to all of these things are very important. Next is how to build a concept map in history. For this first of all you have to identify the concept and subconcepts. Then after this subordinate concepts should stem from the superordinate main concept or idea that is as we do in the hierarchical concept map or even in the flowchart, spider or systems concept map. Arrange concepts in a pattern that make transaction of information easy and clear and because if you fail to do this the entire purpose of concept map is defeated. Our purpose is basically to give information in easy and clear manner and that is why before making a concept map it is very important that you arrange concepts in a pattern that they become very easy, clear and the ideas flow very very accurately. Use circles and boxes to write important concepts. As I told you, without boxes and circles, we cannot even visualize a concept map. Use lines with arrows to link terms. That is, we have to take the help of certain lines with arrows. Arrows would show us the direction. Use keywords to denote relationships. That is, contributes to, is in relation with, or is the result of such keywords are very essential because without them we are not able to see or not able to understand what the concept map is trying to tell us. This type of graphic organizer however always allows changes and new concepts to be added. Now when you are trying to make such, an, such a concept map or such a graphic organizer it should also have scope so that you can add new things or you can delete or edit such concept maps. Let us discuss it in detail. Start with a main idea, topic or issue. Choose a focus question. This is going to be your main idea. This is something that is going to give you a direction as to what needs to be done. That is something that needs to be solved or a conclusion that needs to be reached. Once a topic or question is decided on, building with the hierarchical structure of the concept map becomes easy because you know what is your main idea, what is the main thing that you are trying to solve. After that, various other things become very easy to connect. Determine the subordinate concepts. The next thing is find the subordinate concepts that connect and relate to your main idea. That is your first most important thing is your main idea. After that are subordinate concepts that relate to that main idea or that are the consequences of that main idea. Now once you have written down all the subordinate concepts, rank them which are more important, which are less important. That is most general inclusive concepts should come first. And if you are ranking them according to the level of their importance, then the most important ones should come first. Then link to smaller, more specific concepts. That is, as you go from general to specific, 
link them, give examples, so that the information becomes crystal clear to the learners or to anybody who is referring to the concept map. Linking phrases and words. That is, once the basic links between the concepts are created, add cross links which connect concepts in different areas of map. To further illustrate the relationships and strengthen students' understanding and knowledge on the topic. These linking phrases and words are of utmost importance. Like I told you, without them, nobody would be able to make sense out of any concept map and they would become useless. So once you have written the uh, links or you have made the arrows, you have to write the linking phrases and words, which are the basic essentials of any concept map because they would illustrate the relationship and they would also make the student understand the concept better. Here is an example, cows, then it gives milk and leather. Just imagine if this word produce was not written or provide was not written, then we talk about what milk is useful for or what leather is used for. So when we say cows, cows produce milk. milk is important to cats, humans and calves. So these words which are the linking phrases, they are very important. Likewise, cows provide leather. Leather is used for purses, couches and coats. So now you understand the importance of a concept map, how it makes your understanding clear, what are the role of these uh, circles and boxes, linking phrases, arrows, and also the terms which are subordinate and which are superordinate. That is, the idea is crystal clear. Just by looking at this concept map, you don't have to go to any other details and it becomes easy to understand even for a level of class 2 student. Uses To stimulate the generation of ideas, brainstorming, helping students integrate new knowledge with the previous knowledge, Note taking, encouraging students to discover new concepts and the propositions that connect them. All of this can be done with the help of concept maps. They also allow students to more clearly communicate ideas, thoughts and information, which is not as easy without concept maps. Enabling students to gain enhanced knowledge of any topic and also evaluate the information. The knowledge is immediately enhanced and assessing learner's knowledge. If you see the concept map made by any student, you can see at what level the student lies, that is in terms of knowledge. So learner's knowledge can be assessed with the help of concept maps that they create. Now concept maps in education. When created correctly and thoroughly, Concept maps is a very powerful way for students to reach high levels of cognitive performance. As I told you in the beginning also, it is a very powerful tool in the hands of students. Even for the teachers, like I told you, they can assess. But in the hands of students, they, the only condition is it has to be thorough, it has to be correct. The ideas should be very, very clear and free-flowing. A concept map is also not just a learning tool but an ideal evaluation tool for the educators, measuring the growth of and assessing student learning. Like when the student is making the concept map, it is a tool for teachers and educators who can assess the growth of the student's learning. And it can be compared with the previous level, whether any progress has been made or not. As students create concept maps, any concept map can be given to the students to create and while they create these concept maps, they reiterate ideas using their own words. That is, they are, making, they are using their own linking phrases and they are in a way reiterating ideas that they have understood and help identify incorrect ideas and concepts. Now, while any educator is trying to assess or evaluate the concept map, they can immediately say, where and see wherever the ideas are incorrect. Educators are able to see what students do not understand. Now, wherever the concept map is wrong, 
the educator may have an idea that where the student is not able to understand. Now, what does the educator do? Providing an accurate, objective way to evaluate areas in which students do not yet grasp concept fully. Now, the teacher knows where the student is lacking or where he has gone wrong with the knowledge. In that particular area, the teacher must give more input so as to make the understanding correct. How to use concept maps in classroom? Now, concept maps we see are very important, but the main thing is how to use them in the classroom. So, first of all, use as an in-class pre-assessment tool. Pre-assessment prior to discussing a topic. And why do we need to have a concept map prior to discuss a uh, topic? So that we can know where their understanding is. We can learn about their previous knowledge. We can know the level of the student because as teachers, we have to build upon that level. As I told you, concept maps lie in constructivism. And in constructivism, the previous knowledge is of utmost importance. Now, students ask students to create concept maps. Then, as you discuss the information, they can add to or modify their map to reflect their understanding about the topic. Do as a small group activity. Give your students a problem, case study or even a question with a key concept. Divide them into small groups of let us say 4 to 5 students. Have each group create a concept map as they analyze and synthesize previously learned information into this new scenario. Have the groups present their conclusions. Now here we are dividing the class into let us say four or five students. We are giving them some topics. We are giving them some key concepts. And here they have to analyze and synthesize the information that they already know. And they have to create a concept map. Do as the whole class activity. How do we do as a whole class activity? As a class, create a concept map and use it as a springboard to discuss relationship among the concepts and ideas listed in the map. So one concept map is there and you discuss whatever is there and what relationship lies between the main concept and the sub concepts. Fill in the blanks. Before class, create a concept map of a material you want to cover in the class. Let us say you have a topic that you want to teach in the classroom, make a concept map. But while you make this concept map, remove some of the concepts and labels. That is, you leave them blank. Now, show this partially completed map to the class and have them fill in the blank spots and label the relationship. It is going to be a very good activity in the classroom and you can assess the, the knowledge level of the students and their understanding as to how clearly they have understood. Organize your research. Use a concept map to build and organize your ideas, layer details and find connections and relationships that might never have occurred to you before. So these are the benefits of using concept maps. Now let us discuss a few concept maps. The first one talks about the Mughal family line. Here we want to see whether it is always the eldest born who becomes the next emperor. Just by looking at this concept map, you can see that it is not always true when we talk about Mughal family line or Mughal dynasty. Like here, Babur's son Humayun, his son Akbar and likewise Jahangir, they were all the first bonds, that is the eldest sons of the family. But the, the same is not true about Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb because both of them were not the eldest born. So they tell us a lot about Mughal dynasty. Since the first three ones were the eldest born, so probably just without any knowledge, you can say that this is the norm, but the other two may be because of circumstances, maybe because of wars, or maybe because of certain other reasons were the ones where the eldest son is, did not become the ruler. So this gives you a plenty of idea as to what to expect now in the Mughal dynasty and the wars relating to succession. Next, we have sources of ancient Indian history. Here, this concept map tells us that there are majorly two kinds of sources. One are literary sources and then are archaeological sources. 
Now literary sources are further major literary sources and common perceptions on literary sources. Major literary sources are Vedic literature, later Vedic literature, Puranas, Buddhist literature which is written in Pali language, Jain literature written in Prakrit language, Sanskrit and foreign accounts. Here in Vedic literature we have Vedas and Vedangas. In later Vedic literature we have Upanishads, Aranyaks and Brahmanas. And even in foreign accounts we have accounts of Greeks, Chinese and Arabian accounts. Likewise, what are common perception of these literary sources? That is, they are religious in nature and sometimes they have improper or insufficient chronology. If we come to archaeological sources, there are architectural resources, then there are excavations, epigraphic resources that is inscriptions and also numismatic resources. So, this gives us a very clear idea as to what all resources we have when we talk about ancient Indian history. In the next concept map, we can see the decline of Indus Valley Civilization. What are the various factors that led to decline of Indus Valley Civilization? Now there are a number of causes which are given from time to time. First are natural causes, then there is deforestation, next we have Indo-Aryan migration, then decline in trade with Egypt and Mesopotamian civilization and then what are the major hypotheses. So in natural causes there are a number of causes given. Some historians say it was decrease in fertility of soil due to salinity, then shifting of river channels, there could be drying of rivers also and if not drying of rivers there were floods or there was drought. These are the natural causes. Then it could be deforestation, it could be Indo-Aryan migration, decline in trade with Egypt and Mesopotamia. And what are the major hypotheses? John Marshall and others say that environmental degradation is the cause. Mortimer Wheeler says that Aryan invasion could be the reason. These are the causes of decline of Indus Valley civilization. Now, what are the advantages of concept mapping? They aid in creating a presentation. Whenever you, are, you want to present a concept, concept map is a way to give your information in a logical format. They allow quick interpretation, that is, people can often grasp ideas much more quickly than by reading them in an article or a book. Like here, we just discussed the causes of downfall of Indus Valley civilization and it became very, very easy we did not even refer to any book and we know all the causes. Illustrate the hierarchy of ideas that is understanding how each component relates to the other. Aids in visualizing outcomes that is help to understand the possible indirect results of an action or a program which we may not otherwise foresee. Evaluation after studying a unit Students could be asked to create a concept map as homework or in lieu of a standard test. There are certain disadvantages also. Sometimes relationships are difficult to interpret. For example, spider concept map may fail to show interrelationships of the other concepts, that is the subconcepts. Hierarchical concept map may lack connection among ideas. Systems concept map may complicate an already tough concept. So they are to be used very, very cautiously. Not desirable at initial stage of learning. Most of the, most of the historians and scholars agree that they are for the university level students. An elementary student may lack the conceptual skill to create or interpret a visual map. Not desirable for students with strong auditory but weak visual skills. Having said that, I would still reiterate that concept maps are very important tool and they must be used by teachers as well as students wherever they can be used. Thank you.